Welcome to chapter 12, strategic choices that we're going to make. Well, in the early chapters that we've talked about different strategic choices that we can make. So let me summarise them for you. We can talk about the areas that we can compete in terms of costs or differentiate our business using the Porter's generic strategies. We are talking about the areas to compete. If we were to talk about the directions that we can compete, we can always use the unsolved growth vector matrix. So for example, selling your existing product to existing people or market, that's called market penetration. Or to develop your new product, develop your new market, or to diversify your business, is where you're going to compete with others, or the directions that you're going to compete. Okay? So, very important. Alternatively, you can use the growth or retrenchment strategies. So, for example, to growing your business, you can use developing your own resources or organic growth, buying the existing business or M&A, merges and acquisition, or strategic alliances. So, for example, forming a joint venture agreement with another party. Retrenchment strategy, you can reduce your spending which means the harvest strategy, or to sell your business to others, divest strategy. So, when we talk about strategic choices, we can talk about the industries, geographical locations, or the product lines. And for product lines, geographical locations, or the industries itself, we can examine them using the Boston Consulting Group matrix, or the BCG matrix, because each of them stands for each strategic business unit or each SBU. Now, according to the BCG matrix or the Boston Consulting Group matrix, we will divide each SBU into the market share or the relative market share and the market growth or the revenue growth in the market. It could be high or low here. And then based on two axes, or X and Y axes, we can divide them into four different categories. If I were to say that relative market share is quite high, and then the market growth is quite high, it's like a star. A star will have very high revenue, but at the same time, very high cost to keep with the revenue in terms of advertising and so on. If this is the case then, the profit is quite smooth. Or we could say that it's cash neutral. It's not generating too much cash to a business. It's quite in a neutral position here. But if we firstly introduce a new product in the industry, the relative market share will be quite low, but the, in, the market growth or the future potential may be quite good. And if this is the case, then that's called as the problem child. If that's the problem child, I would say that sales may not be as good as it sounds, but cost is quite high. In essence, we are talking about the question mark as the cash user. So watch out, the problem child may be turned into a thin dog. If it's a thin dog, I would say the relative market share is quite low, market growth is quite low, and therefore both of sales and costs will be low. And as a result, again, it's cash neutral. I will also say at the end of the industry life cycle for many products, for most products or industries, it could become or it could finally become the thin dog. And hence, what the business could do is to harvest it or perhaps to divest it. And finally, if a problem child becomes the star, and star can be turned into catch cow. So catch cow means we have relatively high market share but low growth because we dominate the market already. If this is the case then, I would say that sales is huge. The cost 
could be high. And here is the cost generator. So what we could do from a business point of view is we're going to turn each product line, geographical area or industries that we're operating in into cash cow. That's very important. But it is almost impossible for many businesses to have the cash cow in place in hand. And that's why they keep buying and selling shares uh, in the marketplace. I talk about a particular concept here is relative market share. So how can we calculate the market share? So for example, I would say if the total revenue in the market, I mean, we can always check this information from the independent industry report. So let's say the total sales revenue in the market is $100 and our sales revenue is $5 in our business and that would be 5% of the market share. But is it high or is it low? Well, in this particular exam, uh, the examiner does not specify the relative market share calculation. And you can use the 5 divided into 100, giving us 5%. You can deem that as high or you can deem that as low, it will be fine. As long as you got your explanation to support your claim, uh, this will be absolutely no problem. And you can get full marks for each of your answer. But if I were you, I would like to use the concept of relative market share, especially if you are given the largest competitor's market share. So for example, if the largest competitor's market share is 30%, but you only got 5%, you use 5% and divide it into 30%, and that would be 0.17. I would say the 0.5 is the midpoint, and below 0.5, and that would be low relative market share, and above 0.5, and that would be relatively high market share. In this case then, yes, that would be 0.5 here, and above 0.5, relatively high market share, it could be a star couch cow. L relatively low market share, it could be a question mark, we can call it the problem child, or the thin dog, and need to watch out. But if you're not given the largest competitor's market share, you can always use 5%, and use your subjective assessment to see where not is high or low, and this could be absolutely fine. So, strategic choices, very important. Bear in mind, areas to compete, direction and growth or retrenchment strategies uh, for each product line, geographical area or industries they're operating in, and for each product line, geographical area or the industry, you can examine them using the Boston Consulting Group matrix by categorizing them into four different boxes. It could be the problem child, fin dog, star or couch cow. Very important concept here. A, P, C, accounting for your future.